servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. So they tell us in a system, they say that we Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Performance. Today I'm here with a guest. My name is KC Ama. Wow. And we'll be reacting to a young black African ask Ahmed D that why did God create black Africans to suffer? Wow. <laughs> this indeed is really very interesting. I for one, I believe God himself cannot create <laughs> black Africans to suffer because, you know, despite the fact that everyone is not equal, but I believe if we all can work hard. Well, again, say. it could be that it is really indeed that God created Africans to suffer. So, well, <laughs> so let's just watch the video to <laughs> know why this question and then the answers that will pop up and then the reaction. Yes, let's watch the I, video. I, Maybe I, it is I, true. <laughs> I really want to know mm, uh, if God indeed created black Africans to suffer. Let's see what the video has to yes. say. So let's start with the video. The second question is that. Your second A little louder, A little louder. The second question is that. Why are we, we, we hear that and the people tell us that God created a man? And so all that we have a different, different nation here, population here. So now, why did God allow, allow blacks to, 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 to be hey, saved? Hey, hey, hey. Wow. Now I will explain that. I will explain that. You see, go, it's the creation is a creation of God. But mankind, he creates his own standards of judging. Like for example, we are told by certain groups of churches that the black people of the earth are the children of Ham. You see, Noah, Noah, you heard the name Noah, after the flood, in the Genesis chapter 9 you read, Noah, after the flood, him and his three sons, Sam, Ham and Japheth, they started growing grapes. And from the fruit of the vine, they fermented the wine. And Noah drank too much. And he was lying naked. I'm reading this from the book of Genesis chapter 9. And out of his three sons, Sam, Ham and Japheth, Ham, Ham saw his father's nakedness. You know, sprawled out on the ground naked. And it was a big joke for him. So he laughed. Who laughed? Ham. You know how you spell ham? H-A-M, ham. Ham. H-A-M, ham, you also spell for that piece of pig. See? You know the Englishman, he loves ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. How do you spell ham? That's right. So this person's name was Ham, one of the sons of Noah. His name was Ham. And he saw his father's nakedness and he laughed. Big joke. The other two sons, they felt remorse, ashamed of the father's condition. So they took a piece of cloth and they walked backwards and they covered up the father. The father in the meantime, he knew what was going on, but he was too dead drunk to do anything about it. But when he came into to his senses, he began to curse. And you remember the curse? He said, curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. You attend Bible class, don't you? You remember this? Curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. So they tell us in a system, they say that we black people of the earth <laughs> are the children of Ham. This is becoming interesting. That fellow who behave like a pig, laughed at his father's nakedness. So as such, we are to become the hewers of wood and the drawers of water. So, they want to see to it that you, you keep to your role. Your role is sweep the streets, carry the rubbish bin, work in the factories, whatever. This is your menial labor, that is your destiny. Now, this is the invention of man. See, man's own invention. God didn't make you so. He, as we are told, that he okay. made us in his image. He made everybody upright. He says, he the Lord had made man upright. Upright means straight, going straight. So, the invention of man, the devilishness in man, is finding excuses to how I can discriminate against you, create theories, 
weave stories, fairy tales, and around these fairy tales, I find justification for keeping you down. Now, the Holy Quran, this book of God, the Quran, our religious book, it gives us an explanation of the theory of race. And I would like you to judge whether it answers the problems of mankind or not. It says, and I'm quoting in Arabic, the original, and I give you the translation. It says, Ya Yuhannas, say, O mankind, the whole of mankind, whether Africans, Indian, Chinese, Eskimo, everybody. Ya Yuhannas, O mankind, inna khalaknakum min dhakarim wa unsa. It is we, God Almighty says, we who have created the male and the female. We have created you all of a single pair, a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا And it is we who have made you into nations and tribes. What for? To discriminate against one another? No. It's the لِتَعَارَفُ That you may recognize one another. This Mr. John is a Zulu. That Mr. John is a Kaza. That Mr. John is a Swazi. That Mr. John is an Englishman. That Mr. John is a Frenchman. That Mr. John is a German. For the purpose of recognition, he has made you into nations and tribes. But since man has a sickness of wanting to discriminate on false premises, so God Almighty gives us the standard. We all have a tendency to behave like that. All. There okay. is no exception. There is no nation on earth who is mm -hmm. an exception to this rule. That everybody wants to create standards mm -hmm. of judging other people mm -hmm. as inferior That's to themselves. True. You said the African just now. And I accept that the African is in the South African context, he is at the lowest rung of the ladder. Economically, educationally, in the professions, he is at the bottom rung. That we have to agree. But now among the Africans, you have Zulus. I was questioning the students, I said, are you all Zulus? The majority way. Some said no. She is a Khaza. Somebody said something, Chwana. But now, the majority of the people that are here in this institute are Zulus. Yeah. Am I right? Yes. Right. Now, ask the Zulu. Ask the Zulu, what is Zulu? <laughs> is Zulu. What does it mean? Is Zulu. The heavens. No? Is Zulu. You are the heavenly people. Is Zulu. Hmm? Yes, that's in your mind. Is Zulu, we are the topmost people. Among the Africans, who is the greatest tribe, the warrior nation, the topmost nation? Your title, the name, your name of your, your race is also Is Zulu. Is Zulu. And what about the others? What do the Zulu say? Isilwane. Am I right? What does he say about the others? The Khaza, the Swazi, the Chwana, what are they? Isilwane. No, this is the nature of man. Everybody. The Arab said, he said, and the Arab means we are the eloquent people and the rest of the world is <laughs> <laughs> The Jews said, we are the children of God and the rest of the world Gentiles. You know? Jews and Gentiles. What is Gentile? Means unclean, filthy, dirty people. All the rest of the world uncircumcised. Filthy, dirty people. This is the nature of man. Every human being on earth, whether he's an Indian, whether he's a European, whether he's an Englishman, he feels better than the German. The German feels he's better than the French, and the French feels he's better than the Italian. So this is the nature of man. So God Almighty, God Almighty, he gives okay. us a standard. See, since man has the sickness of creating false standards for himself, this creator, God himself, he gives us a standard of judging between people. And the judgment is, it says, Inna akramakum in ballahi atkakum. So most certainly, the noblest in the sight of God is he who is the best in conduct. Not good or bad, not rich or poor, not black or white, but the best in conduct. If your behavior is better for mankind than mine, you are a better person. If my behavior is better than yours for mankind, then I'm a better person. It has got nothing to do with your race, your language, your color, or your riches. This is the standard as given by God Almighty in the Holy Quran, standard of judging between one and another. Your behavior, your conduct, your good behavior. Any other wow. Question?
this indeed is really very powerful. You can tell Amedi that I believe is a very intelligent man, and I see a reason with every point he has said in this video. And let me read the title again. A young black African as Sheikh Mohammed did that. Why did God create black Africans to suffer? Wow. And through this video, I believe this video is very educative. I'm a D that has really enlightened us that God did not create black Africans to suffer. Not just black Africans. God did not create anyone to suffer. Yes. God doesn't discriminate. And the standard of discrimination has been created by man. You get, I've been created by man. Through this video, we get to understand that. Just like, I don't know if you are from Africa or you are from a tribe in Africa, you always feel your own tribe is superior to the yeah, other tribe. Just like if you ask a German man, a German man about his own country, he will tell you his, his country is better than, uh, Germany is better than England. You ask an England man, an England man will tell you England is better than Germany. And God does not create us to, does not create black Africans to suffer. God does not create anyone to suffer. This standard of discrimination has been created by man. God can only judge us by our conduct. And our conduct, according to this video, I may do that I've explained, conduct can maybe can be our behavior, can be the way we conduct ourselves, you know. God does not discriminate between race or between color. This is the standard that have been created by man. Wow, this indeed is really very educative. What do you think about what he said? Wow, I'm, I'm so much enlightened. Uh, it's a very educative video right there. In case you didn't follow it, I mean, the, the answer to the question, in case you didn't follow step by step, kindly start the video again listen to it because it is very very educative yeah you see the standard of man as he said we the god has set the standard but it has come to a point that uh we blacks have already accepted that we we are poor yeah you understand like we are we are the continent that needs to suffer <laughs> yes as as he made mention that um Every country or every tribe sees himself or herself superior, superior to the other. Even when you come to the Africa countries, for instance, Nigeria or Ghana, maybe Nigeria will see himself or, or itself as superior than Ghana. Mm. Ghana will see itself as superior than Nigeria. And even if you go to Nigeria or Ghana or any other African countries, within that specific country, you see there are tribes. There are so many tribes. You have so many yeah. uh, uh cities or states within it even they themselves who are in the same country people still see themselves superior to others yeah even even in a family setting exactly. in a family setting you see in brothers regardless. seeing themselves as superior it. more than the brother even in some nation they see a male child more superior, superior than, than a female, female child, child which and is this, supposed to be so yeah so that is our first mentality that we have that is making us feel that we blacks are made to suffer really god did not create anybody to suffer you see when you said i i was saying okay let's listen to the video maybe okay. it is true that god created uh, us to suffer but from in what fact, from what he has said and then from the look of things and then reasoning beyond reasonable doubt yeah god did not create anybody to suffer it is our mentality it is our actions and inactions how we see people we we underrate people and we overrate like we 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 overrate some more than the others yeah that oh, okay now the white the white they don't have any problems the white they are not suffering they don't have any issue but on the reality if you go there they also have their challenges yeah they have their problems and when we come to africa we have our wins we have our ups and we have our downs yeah but here is the case we always think that blacks are made to suffer no yeah god didn't make anybody to suffer I, in fact i'm enlightened by i made did that, that wow. and i love wow. this video i'm wow. educated right even now. the blacks you see even when they're acting a movie be it a black be it maybe an american movie or i don't know 
you see, they always depict a devil with <laughs> a devil black. as someone <laughs> that is black, that has a horn, that has, sometimes they'll do that, the devil has a big head. Mm. But the, has anyone actually devil, seen the, the devil? The devil is the black that is scary. It yeah. Is scary. <laughs> you see, he, he used, used Noah's children, for example, using Ham's own, yeah. specifically just for what you're saying. Now, yeah. Ham was painted like he was the one to carry the rubbish, sweep around, yeah. do the whole thing. So <laughs> that has been translated to yeah. the work of uh, the exactly. black Africans, yes. that we have to sweep the street, you know? And I can understand that if you look at the economy of the world as it is right mm -hmm. now, you can see that most white countries, they are more elevated than the black countries. But I, I don't really think that God came down from god came down from heaven to earth and to do it know, for them to do it for them no. and say the the white take this money take this use it and develop your country i don't believe that they all they they work to build their nation so i believe if we white africans can embrace ourselves and take the challenge and you know we work hard you know assist each other we can be able to, you know, rise as a nation, rise as a people, rise as a race to, you know, to be one of the best in the world. To be one of the best in the world. If you take it's a case like the story of uh, people like, let me say, uh, which, Dubai. Mm -hmm. Dubai yes. was, you know, was more like a desert. It wasn't more like Dubai is a desert. Desert. You, but you understand. If you look at Dubai right now, Everybody want to go to Dubai. Party. It's not because God came down and turned the desert into mansions. It's because they were able to, you know, with God's intervention, they were able to, you know, organize themselves, you know, do what needs to be done, and things work out for their good. I believe we blacks also, if we can stand up and take the challenge, and we do the right things, we work hard, I believe, Black Africans can also achieve what the whites have also achieved. Though some people might be elevated more than some people, but it's as a result of their own hard work. Yes. Wow, this video is really very interesting. So, we would like to hear your comments. What do you like about this video by Ahmed Didat? Commenting on the topic the black African guy asked. And which other reaction would you love us to also listen to and react to don't forget click on the subscribe button click on the like button do have a nice day love you bye